Measuring force can be accomplished in a few different ways. For example, a balance can be used to measure force with known masses. Also, one could use uh, an elastic component to measure the force. A simple example of an elastic component is a spring. So if we have a spring with known stiffness, apply a force to it, and if we measure the displacement, we can compute what that force is that generates the displacement. Here are some other components that are elastic. Here we have a rod that is undergoing axial strain. We're applying a force in the axial direction, and there's a displacement L. So the force then is the area times the modulus of elasticity for that material times the displacement uh, generated by the force divided by the length. And these components are simpler to fabricate than springs, a little more durable. Another example would be a cantilever beam, and here's our displacement Y in the downward direction. Force is applied at the end of the beam, and that force is 3 times modulus of elasticity times the area moment of inertia, so for the cross section of the beam times the displacement divided by the length cubed. And the displacement, so if we want to measure force, if we want to determine the force acting on this elastic component, we could measure displacement. That could be done using an LVDT, a capacitive transducer, um, with a laser, or we could use a strain gauge to measure the strain on this component. Here is an example of one of these uh, elastic components. So we have here a cantilever beam and a force is being applied to the end. And I drew it in 3D but it doesn't come out too clear. You can see the dimensions of the beam. It's a quarter of an inch wide, 30 second high, and two inches long. And it's made of steel so the modulus of elasticity is given by this number. We want to find the force required for the beam to be displaced 1 16th of an inch. And once we've done that, we want to find the uncertainty given that the length measurements here are have uncertainty of half of a thousandth. First, the force. Here's that expression again, 3 times EI Y over L cubed. I is the moment of area moment of inertia for the beam cross section. And for a rectangle, that is the width times the height cubed over 12. So substituting these values in, we get that uh, moment of inertia is 6.36 times 10 to the negative 7. The units for that are inches to the fourth. Now we can substitute in all the values for force, and we come up with 0.422 pounds is going to make this beam deflect a sixteenth of an inch. Now what's the uncertainty in that calculation? Well, our uncertainty in our force is given by the square root of the sum of the squares of the contributions of each of the uncertainties. So we have the uncertainty in the width. So we're going to square the product of the uncertainty of the width and the partial derivative of the force with respect to the width. Add to that the square of the product of the uncertainty of the height and the partial derivative of the force with respect to height and then the square of the product of uncertainty in length and the partial derivative of force with respect to length. Here is that expression rewritten where I substituted i is equal to width times height cubed over 12. So force is 3 twelfths times modulus of elasticity times width times height cubed times length to the negative 3 power times the displacement. So, partial derivative of that expression with respect to width, we come up with 3 twelfths e times h cubed l to the negative 3 y. And when we substitute in these values for e, h, and l, and y, we come up with 1.69 pounds per inch. So that's the partial derivative of force with respect to width. So, every inch that width changes, we're going to have to add 1.69 pounds. Well, if it was linear. It wouldn't be linear through that whole region, probably. Well, it would be linear in this case. The other ones wouldn't be linear. Anyhow, I digress. The partial derivative of force with respect to height 
comes out to be 40.48 pounds per inch, and here's the partial derivative of force with respect to length. So partial derivative of force with respect to length, we take the derivative of this expression with respect to L, treating all these other terms as constants. So L is the only variable here in this partial derivative, so we have negative 9 twelfths E times W H cubed times L to the negative fourth times Y, and that ends up being negative 0.633 pounds per inch. Now these uncertainties, W sub W, W sub H, and W sub L, they're all the same, and they're half of a thousandth that was given in the problem statement. There are measurements of the dimensions here or have uncertainty of half of a thousandth. We come up with the uncertainty in this force calculation is 0 0.0203 pounds, which is relatively significant or compared to the magnitude of the force that we calculated.